Hello, good afternoon. It's Hadil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets for Thursday, the 2nd of June 2016. As always, please do visit CFDs.com for your trading needs uh, with regards to uh, opening up a potentially new account as well. You are entitled to a 25% bonus on new trading accounts. Also visit tradesignaler.com uh, where you can uh, get the latest signals and market updates from leading uh, providers on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of European markets, let's try and decipher exactly what's going on here. Uh, Asian markets overnight are overtly uh, bearish. Uh, the Nikkei was down uh, almost 1.5%. The Shanghai Hang Seng the Chinese market certainly down as well. Obviously, the uh, ongoing concerns with regards to Moody's highlighting the fact that uh, the uh, de the delay in the sales tax is obviously a credit negative for the uh, Japanese market. Now, in terms of economic data overnight, uh, Australia exports, imports certainly um, uh, failed uh, to uh, really impress and, and continue on with the rally in the Aussie as retail sales certainly lagged as well. Uh, Japanese consumer confidence came in more or less in line. Unemployment numbers in Spain came in stronger. UK PMI construction data actually came in weaker. And uh, inflation, st uh, deflation still remains a concern with P PPI uh, in inflation data out of the Eurozone coming out worse than expected. Now, that hasn't stopped the uh, Euro USD from moving higher, though. Okay, the Euro USD is certainly inflating here. Allow me to just bring up the chart of the Euro. Bear with me. Bring up the correct charts for you. Okay, so the Euro USD has actually punctured the 1.12 handle on the back of uh, Mr. Draghi potentially, which really is uh, in contradiction with today's data. But Mr. Draghi is no longer going to be uh, as dovish as everybody expects. Now, the uh, dovish uh, obviously um, card certainly has been played, and as you can see, the Euro USD certainly has rebounded. Now, the daily chart will certainly explain that to you. Clearly, see that we have bounced. Now, this resistance level at 1.12. What well, 20 certainly is has held on the back of those weaker inflation numbers, but the euro certainly has bounced and broken out of the uh, bounce from the 200 MA and broken out the down sloping contracting wedge type pattern. Okay, now again, this certainly needs to be observed carefully as to the uh, potentially next move in this market. Now, again, 1.1220 will be 1.1220 will be the key resistance zone, previous support equals resistance as it has held before going into Mr. Draghi. Now, everybody is expected, uh, everybody widely believes that Mr. Draghi will not fire anything in terms of any additional uh, stimulus. If anything, he's actually going to be more hawkish and uh, lay the blame on fiscal expansion or fiscal uh, improvement. So again, that's a net net negative and will certainly uh, serve to uh, actually uh, cause the European equities to fall, from my understanding, especially in the back of, uh, obviously, uh, French, or should we say, the uh, Nikkei, Japanese Nikkei, certainly down overnight. In terms of uh, other, uh, obviously, major news releases, we have uh, jobless data out of the um, uh, US jobs data, uh, ADP employment, continuous jobless claims and initial jobless claims. We also have the ECB monetary statement, which I've already discussed, really is going to be a, um, a foregone conclusion that Mr. Draghi is actually going to be neutral, stroke hawkish. Uh, FOMC, Mr. Powell, uh, Mr. Carney, obviously speaking as well. And we have this famous uh, OPEC meeting, okay? So again, all eyes on that, which really is a, is a false uh, uh, false gun again. It's a false alarm because uh, the uh, OPEC members, again, remain um, bitterly divided, okay? And uh, this, they certainly have played down any chance of any potential uh, output court as well. Again, the Iranians are not on board, and the Saudis certainly will not be on board either, and the Russians are fed up of the whole thing altogether. Okay, in terms of uh, the actual price of oil, I did uh, post a chart yesterday with a potential H&S formation, as you can see here. A daily chart certainly is for showing you uh, signs of exhaustion. That resistance zone and for previous uh, support equals or previous resistance equals support of 47 will come into play. The $50 region certainly has uh, become a potential Great Wall of China. A 60-minute chart, you can see here the resistance is holding at 49.3. It's very unlikely we go back up and retest that $50 level. Okay, uh, Euro, I've explained also. The bun chart, I did explain that with regards to buns on the daily chart. You clearly see that we are holding resistance and the buns obviously looking to move lower with the Euro moving higher. Now, in terms of the actual uh, indices, let's see exactly where they're positioned. The chart is telling me that the Euro, with it being moving with it moving higher up to 1.1220, you are looking at a potential gap fill. 
at 3.07. That remains a target for me. I remain short and I'm looking for 3.07 on the euro stocks. On the S&P 350, again, that horizontal resistance has held. We have bounced off uh, slightly in the daily chart, but again, it's all about that gap filled below. The German DAX itself on the daily chart, we are retracing again that unfilled gap, but it certainly remains in play, especially with bonds at resistance and the euro moving higher. That obviously indicates risk off for uh, equities or European equities, and you are looking for a move lower, especially with the Nasdaq at, at resistance as well. Okay, that certainly is an important aspect of my analysis. Uh, again, the Jack certainly has pushed higher, but that gap fill of previous support equals resistance. Or previous resistance equals support at 10 100 and 10 0, 50 remains in play from my understanding especially with weak economic data this week as well uh, and also like i said the, the move in the uh, high in the euro also the usd jpy trade a lot of individuals are not focusing on that again that is being ignored on the uh, false expectations of a short squeeze going into potentially opec and uh, mr draghi once that's over i think the the shorts will certainly come out and play from my understanding, and you can see here the USD JPY now below 109. Again, risk aversion, and the yen is certainly moving higher. Equities are not factoring that in. Whether it's due to the ECB meeting, whether it's due to the OPEC meeting, a lot of the shorts are certainly staying away. Okay, so again, um, short covering going on, and that's helping the markets, not actual organic buying. That's my under interpretation. The CAC 40 as well, you have the unfilled gap below, so again, keep an eye out for that. The 10 minute chart certainly has held that uh, 45460 zone. Uh, so it should be interesting to see how this market reacts. Again, that unfilled gap certainly remains uh, like the uh, logical way to go in terms of uh, the next potential movement in the markets, given the fact that the uh, Nikkei was down and the USD JPY is below 109. Okay, uh, again, that's my interpretation. So um, looking for weakness. Okay, in terms of the FTSE 100. Let's just bring up this chart. This one has um, certainly defied the uh, potential odds, even with the uh, obviously oil prices weakening and uh, any potential output ceiling being talked down. Uh, you have obviously hit the 50% retracement at 6221 uh, for the FTSE 100. And that certainly, if we do push higher, I mean, my stop loss is at 6238 on my shorts. But if we do push higher, I will look to reshort at 6245 and 6250 level, where previous support equals uh, resistance. Okay, again, looking to retest that 6150 zone, potentially even lower on the back of Brexit concerns and the lack of any potential output seeding uh, confirmation or agreement. Okay, again, in terms of the FTSE, that's my interpretation thus far. Yes, you do have an inverted head and shoulders formation, but it's very unlikely to, to follow through unless we do get an output seeding agreement, which is very unlikely. Also, given the fact that we've had weaker construction day throughout the UK today as well, uh, along with uh, concerns, obviously, over Brexit, etc., etc., it's very hard to see a bullish formation playing out. Okay, Again, that's uh, the market wrap, so watch out for the US session. Again, like, just to confirm the Nasdaq, as you can see here, approaching gap fill resistance, certainly into resistance, looking to move lower. Uh, you have multiple fill gaps below as well. Uh, the biotechs are obviously into resistance so everything is indicating risk off and that's what i'm expecting going into the opec meeting and the ecb meeting as well okay that's the market wrap goodbye now folks.